Well, speaking of Raw, we had uh, two Intercontinental, or I'm sorry, Money in the Bank uh, qualifiers. And we have new women's tag team champions who, as pretty much everybody expected, ended up being Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler. And, uh, you know, it was uh, it was a Raw show. It opened up with uh, AJ Styles, who was not on Raw, showing up on Raw and admitting, well, you know, I'm really not supposed to be here, but I wanted to show up. So uh, Seth was doing his promo about being the champion. The fans were chanting, you deserve it. And so AJ came out and he said, I just couldn't help but show up to congratulate you. And, you know, these people said you deserved it, but uh, they're wrong. And, of course, people boo. And he says, you earned the right to be the world heavyweight champion. Well, you knew that's where that was yes. going. Which is actually, you know, what's funny about that is. Uh, but he could have still deserved it, too. Well, what's funny about it is they clearly had this thing planned out knowing that Seth was going to come out and the fans would chant, you deserve it. So it is now it is now so obvious it's going to happen. They work it into the promos that people are going to Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, script, they actually script the line, yeah. Yeah. So Judgment Day came out, and uh, long story short, they agreed to do a tag match main event for later, although the Judgment Day would not reveal which two members were going to uh, be facing them. So they go backstage, and Anna Pierce is talking to presumably Vince or Triple H, somebody on the phone, and uh, he literally says, well, you know, it does kill this brand split, but damn it, that's going to be a big match. Yeah. And so that was the argument for allowing AJ to come to Raw and wrestle in the main event. Well, it, you know, you knew it was going to happen. Um, and, you, you know, what, 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 you know, I mean, Heyman's already been on the show a couple of times. So it's not like, you know, the, you know, and this, um, you know, let's face it, that it kind of makes no sense that the tournament for the Raw championship had SmackDown people in it to begin with. None of this makes any sense. No. It's made zero sense. I wonder if, if AEW is going to do it any better with the transfer portal. Uh, well, I mean, if they are actually doing a hard br uh, brand split. I hope uh, they're not, because I think a hard brand split's stupid. Well, you know, I will say this. If they do it, they're going to do it better, because WWE could not do it worse. I mean, literally, there isn't even a brand split. It's just people are just showing up wherever they want, just like they were doing before with Triple H, which, by the way, I prefer, but... You know, if you're going to do that, I don't know why you told us for weeks how important this was going to be and how strict it was going to be, and then it's just total bullshit. It's just a yeah, but that's how it's always been. Why would it be any different? Because like you know that, what? It's not how it's, it's always been. been like, because it's been some like, weeks, sometimes they'll go two months before they do this bullshit. Yeah, they haven't gone one single week. No, they not didn't do one it. week have they gone without somebody going back and forth from these two shows. And you know, they'll, whenever it's needed, they will, as you know. You know, well, the fact like, of the yeah. matter is it's needed every week. So why bother doing a brand split? Because they are claiming they want to do that. Who knows? I mean, it's like, it's it's always been like that in wrestling, though. You know, if, if you own two companies, I mean, the, the deal is, is you're going to try to make the best matches possible. You're going to try to book the best television shows. And strict rules keep you from doing it. So... You know, why have strict rules? I mean, you know, they 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 have the, you know, again, I don't even think that they need a roster split. I think that whoever, um, you know, I mean, you can, you know, whoever, whatever makes for the best TV show and whatever makes for the best matches, just go do it. But, um, you know, they've decided they want, you know, a Raw roster and a SmackDown roster. And as a general rule, you know, that's what it's going to be. And as time goes by, uh, it will be less and less. And then one day, someday... You know, like it always is. They'll just go, you know what? We're just going to have the best people on both shows. Um, and it may not be soon because they're not they're not as pressured over ratings as they were before. Because, uh, you know, the one thing where people talk about, you know, wrestling ratings being down, they're completely, completely miss the point. Because if you understand television... Wrestling means more to television than it has in in twenty years, and and even then, during the big peak period when wrestling was really at its most popular, far more popular than now, the reality is is that there were so many popular shows on cable television that even though yes, wrestling was a dominant force, 
it was not like it was running away from everything else, and it's not like nobody else, you know, you didn't have other hits. I mean, USA Network had plenty of hits. I mean, now you take, you know, Monday Night Raw for USA, and it's like they collapse. They're not, you know, and, and um, you know, TBS, um, you know, obviously there's, there's other shows that do good numbers on TBS, but, um, you know, other than sports, you know, on TBS and TNT, pretty much nothing's beaten Dynamite. You know, there's, you know, that uh, Rich and Shameless show's actually doing pretty well. Um, but it's like, that's, you know, that's like the only other show that they've got that's doing like levels of uh, what wrestling does. So it's, it's um, you know, more, you know, it's a bigger thing on cable and a more valuable property on cable than uh, than it's been, you know, maybe ever. But certainly more than it's been in over 20 years. Well, speaking of over 20 years, we had Miz and Ricochet in a Money in the Bank qualifier, and Miz did more in this match than he's done in 20 years. Yeah, I think somebody's like just, I think he just wanted to prove something. Well, he at one point did a running of Frankensteiner on Ricochet, which looked good, and That's then nice. yeah. ended up on the apron. He did a springboard high cross onto uh, Ricochet. And then, of course, Rick Shea made his comeback. Shooting star press got the pin. And, uh, hey, I'm all for – Miz doesn't need to be a luchador. But you know what? If you had one different thing in every Miz match, that's something. Because otherwise, we watch the exact same match every time. So when he did that running Frankensteiner, all of a sudden, like, my eyes were open. And I, I paid more attention to his match. So I was like, what's he doing and why? And is he going to do something else? Well, look. The, and he look, did. Here, here, here's the thing. The business changes. It changes every single day. If you keep doing what you used to be doing and you don't change with the business, then you get left behind. So maybe... Unless you're Jeff Jarrett. Yeah, I suppose. But Jeff doesn't wrestle exactly the same way that he used to either. But, I mean, Jeff's also 50... Well, listen, I'm watching 50s, these 94 Raws every week, and he's pretty much wrestling exactly the same as he always did. Oh, he was a lot more athletic. He was doing high drop kicks and things like well, that. He ain't doing sure any of that. He, he ain't doing any of that now. So we had. Uh, so anyway, Rick Shea won. So he's moving on to uh, Money in the Bank. Then we had a Trish promo, and she talked about how she didn't want these people chanting "Thank you, Trish." She didn't care anything about these people, and she calls out Zoe Stark, saying, "You know, Becky should go away and give the uh, spotlight to people like Zoe." So Zoe comes out and she says, "Thank you, Trish," and. She points out this giant bruise on Trish's face, which Trish says that she got from Becky. And she says, uh, if I see her again, I'm going to have my friend Zoe take her out. So Becky comes out on the ramp, vows to ruin Zoe's life. She says, you know, Trish, you and I are both in our gear, which was not exactly true because Trish was in like eight inch giant enormous heels. But she was wearing the same Body costume. Yeah, they actually. They, uh, Becky pointed they out. The, they both were did. wearing the same clothes. She said that we were wearing on Saturday. So uh, she wanted a match. That's kind of weird. It kind of is. They they literally were selling it like they had not changed since Saturday, which is which a is, long, sweaty flight. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Why did, I don't even I don't even know why did Trish wear heels? Because when you go out there in heels and then you start doing stuff physical, it looks so weird. Well, I think she was supposed to make us think she wasn't going to wrestle, but. She fought a Well, then why didn't she wear a wrestling suit? Why didn't she wear a That's another clothes? great question I cannot answer. I mean, it's like it's like either either you're you're planning on wrestling and you wear your wrestling gear, or you're thinking you're not wrestling and you wear your clothes. She wore her wrestling gear with high heels. Well, they got in this big brawl and they ended up double teaming Becky, laid her out. Zoe hit her with the finish, didn't blow your nose this time. Trish uh, knocked her out and they left her for dead. Nobody's. I kept waiting for somebody to save her. No one came out to save Becky. No. This plaque. I'm still yeah. waiting for this stupid plaque. Yeah, yeah Paul and Bischoff or who? What in God's name is going on? Uh oh. Who let you in here? Everybody's favorite. Come over here. You can't even be seen. What? Oh my God. Oh! Happy days here for Brian Alvarez. There it is. Presented oh, at that. F4W Online for passing 100,000 subscribers. Uh-huh. I want to give Oreo a hug. Come here, you big fat whale. Yes. <laughs> Thank you to everybody hey. out there. Uh-oh. Hey! Uh what are you doing? Brian? 
Oreo? Hey, oh. I'm taking over the show. Oh, no. Dom, Oreo. hit that music, brother. How oh, the hell with it. You know what? It's Monday. It's dance party. No, man. Hey, no. Hey. I love you guys. I love you. When can you have this much fun on a Monday on Wrestling Observer Live? I think we may have started something new here. I hate that whale! If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.